Hey guys, and welcome to another very exciting video. Today, I want to introduce you to Boris FX Particle Illusion, a really powerful, fully revamped, particle-based motion graphics generator. Particle Illusion makes it really quick and easy to add all sorts of exciting effects, such as swish motion graphics, or fairy sparkles, energy, fire, smoke, uh, into your video, and then track them to your footage and mask them out so they sit really nicely in your shot. And to me, the zinger is that Particle Illusion also works in video editing tools such as Adobe Premiere Pro, so you can create these cool effects without the need for any advanced tools such as Adobe After Effects. But first off, full frontal disclaimer, this video is sponsored by Boris FX. I really like working with their team and I really enjoy their software. And if you want to get in on the fun, go and check out Particle Illusion on the Boris FX website. It is included in the Continuum 2019 plugin package and at a lower cost in the Continuum Particles unit. Also, don't forget that you can use my custom coupon code Surfaced Studio in one word to get yourself 15% off the final price. Uh, but now, since that's getting a little bit out of control, let's jump into the video and check out what you can actually do with Particle Illusion. Welcome to the exciting world of Adobe Premiere Pro. I have a very simple clip here of the Melbourne skyline at night. And while this shot looks quite nice already, let's make it a whole lot more exciting and use Boris FX Particle Illusion and add a whole bunch of fireworks behind all of these buildings. Once you've installed either Boris Continuum Complete or the Particle Units, which include Particle Illusion, in your effects panel within Premiere Pro, you will have the BCC Particle Illusion effect available. So let's apply this effect to our clip. And now, within the effect controls, let's select to launch Particle Illusion. This is the revamped UI for Particle Illusion and the workflow is really simple. Over on the left hand side you will find your emitter libraries and here you'll find different categories for sparkles, sci-fi, smoke, nature, fire, fireworks, which is what we want to add. And in these categories you'll literally find thousands of different emitters that you can select from and just customize in any way that you want. As you select these effects you'll get a live preview up in the preview window above. And the cool thing is you can actually click and drag to check out what this would look like if you were to animate your emitter. Over on the right hand side you will have a preview of what this effect looks like composited into your video. And right now this is all black but we can come up to the top and change this preview background option over to composite over source video so we can actually see our clip from Premiere Pro. And let's add some fireworks into the sky. So in our emitter library you can either search if you know what you're looking for or you can simply click through and try to find something that you like and you can simply double click the effect to add it to the center of your scene. Let's play this back. And you now have this effect composited into your shot. Click and drag to reposition this emitter and again let's rewind and play this back. And that is looking pretty cool. In the layers panel each effect that you add in Particle Illusion has a whole bunch of different properties that you can change, customize and animate in any way that you want. Most effects also have sub effects that you can then customize. But let's collapse all of that and just add a few more bursts. Let's go to a time maybe about a second or two in. Let's add just kind of two bursts on the sides of this big one. Maybe this one looks quite cool. And you can either double click to add it into the center of the scene or with the effect selector you can simply click into your scene to actually position this effect. So let's place a burst here for just a little bit and as this one pops up let's add another one over on the left hand side. Maybe go a little bit further and let's add one more and let's rewind and play this back. Cool that's looking pretty festive. Now I want this to be even more festive so I'm now simply going through the emitter library choosing different fireworks particle effects and adding them into my skyline. Let's rewind and play this back. And that's looking really nice. It is super easy to customize which particles you have in your scene, but also how these particles look and behave. But for now, I think this should be good enough. Let's hit apply and return to Premiere Pro. And if we now play this back in here, you will see all of your fireworks composited into the shot. Obviously, all of these fireworks should really sit behind the buildings. And in order to achieve that, Particle Illusion includes Mocha. Mocha is a powerful planar tracker which well is for tracking but you can also use it to rotoscope and define masks that then select which parts of a layer are visible. At the bottom of the particle illusion effect you will find the Mocha pixel chooser. Let's set this to on and let's click on the big button to launch Mocha. Now this is not going to be a tutorial on how to use Mocha. I've got other videos for that on my channel that you can check out. Highly recommend it. It's a really great tool. 
All I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the spline tool and draw a shape around the sky in my scene, the part of the shot where I want the particles to be visible. On the way out, because I'm a neat freak, I will rename this layer to Sky, hit Ctrl and S to save everything and then let's close Mocha and return to Premiere Pro. And it's as easy as that. All of the fireworks are now sitting behind the buildings in our shot and in the pixel chooser you can enable to view the mask so you can see the mask that you've defined in Mocha. And now if you rewind and play this back, we've just added fully customized fireworks into our scene without ever leaving Premiere Pro. That was easy, but what if you're working with a shot where the camera is moving or the object that you want to emit particles from is moving? For that, you can use Mocha's tracking capabilities and let's check this out by being a really good citizen and setting this trash bin on fire. For that, let's apply BCC Particle Illusion to our clip and in the effect controls, let's launch Particle Illusion. This time, I'm going to browse for a nice looking fire effect and then add that to my scene right on top of the trash bin. Let's change the emitter shape to an area, scale it up a little bit and maybe lower the zoom so that the flames appear a little bit further away from the camera. Now if you play this back, you'll notice that the effect just doesn't stick to the top of the trash bin because the camera is moving. You could now, of course, just animate the position of the emitter by keyframing it. You'll also get these really nice motion path handles directly in your preview window when you do that. However, this approach will cause a trail of particles to appear behind the emitter because the emitter itself is actually moving. What we really want to do is track the movement of the camera and apply that onto the particle effect so the effect itself within this world remains stationary. For that we can use the excellent planar tracker Mocha which is built directly into Particle Illusion. Let's return to Premiere Pro and now within the Particle Illusion settings let's change the transforms option from none over to world. World is useful if your camera moves but the emitter is stationary. Emitter is useful if you have a static camera and the emitter itself is moving and world and emitter is great if you have a moving emitter in a moving world. With transform set to world, let's expand the motion tracker slash mocha tab and let's launch the mocha motion tracker. In here you can now track the movement of your world and of your emitter and apply that tracking data back onto the particles generated by particle illusion. Again, I'm not going to go through the details of how Mocha works. I will simply disable the emitter offset as we only need to worry about the world and then move the world center search area to the hole at the bottom of this garbage bin. I will also drag the world center marker here so it's a little bit easier to see. And now let's simply track forward and let Mocha do its magic. Once this is completed, you can see that Mocha has tracked the hole in the bin nicely and the world center is following the movement of our camera. Let's hit Ctrl and S to save and return to Premiere Pro. Hmm, the fire has vanished. That is actually caused by the fact that we moved the world center from the center of the scene to the left hand side, which has pushed our fire off to the left side of the screen. We can bring it back easily enough though, simply by adjusting the offset X and Y position. And now if you play this back, the fire is finally following the movement of our camera nicely. Finally, let's mask out the bottom of the bin so the fire appears to be coming out of it rather than just sitting on top. For that, just like with our fireworks, let's enable the pixel chooser and jump right back into Mocha. Let's grab the spline tool and draw a rough shape around the upper part of our bin that we want to use to hide our fire particles. I'm also going to disable the effect trackers which we already used when we were tracking the movement of the camera and let's track this through. Cool! I might have to add a few keyframes to adjust the shape just a little bit during the shot as I was sneakily tracking both sides of the bin which are actually perpendicular planes but that will work well enough I reckon. So let's save our data and return to Premiere Pro. Mm, and the fire is now only visible where we did draw our shape so let's expand the mask tab in the pixel chooser and simply choose to invert our mask. Maybe I'll give it a few pixels of feather as well just to make it look a little bit sleeker. Nice, that's actually looking really cool. If you're wondering why the fire is all yellow, that is caused by Premiere Pro not limiting the saturation of the colors and thus some of them end up outside of the broadcast safe range. You can either apply the video limiter in Premiere Pro or I'm going to drag and drop the BCC broadcast safe effect and bring all of the colors back into the legal range. Let's check this out one more time. And that's looking really nice. The fire is now nicely tracked into the moving shot. Finally, here's a quick example of a motion graphics title that I created using Particle Illusion. I simply created a small decorative graphic and then used that as a mat within Particle Illusion to define the area where the particles would be visible. Finally, I added a few fairy style particles into the scene and I was able to create this title sequence in around about 10 minutes. Again, all without ever leaving Premiere Pro. 
Particle Illusion also works in Adobe After Effects, but also in Avid Media Composer, DaVinci Resolve, Vegas Pro and other OFX hosts, and I actually really like it. Go and check it out, see if it is something that you may like to use too, to make adding these types of effects to your videos a whole lot easier. And that's all there is to it. Be sure to check out Particle Illusion on the Boris FX website if you want to learn more. And remember, you can use code Surface Studio to get yourself 15% off. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.